Welcome back, Seth Bling here. A little over a year ago, I became the first person to complete a Super Mario World credits warp on the Super Nintendo console using a route created by JeffW356. Yesterday, I became the first human to do something much crazier on console. I used a series of Super Mario World glitches to inject 331 bytes of processor instructions into system RAM. It was the source code for Flappy Bird. I did this using standard, unmodded Super Nintendo hardware. While this kind of thing has been done before by feeding pre-recorded controller inputs into a console from a computer, no human has ever completed this kind of exploit until now. In this video, I want to explain how I pulled it off, but first I want to give a huge thank you to P4 Plus 2, who is well known in the Super Nintendo hacking community. He wrote most of the assembly code and provided a ton of technical information necessary to complete this exploit. He's the real brains behind this operation. I also want to thank Mr. Cheese, who found the arbitrary code execution setup that made this whole project possible, as well as suggesting some vital improvements to my method. Now, let me show you how it was done. To begin with, I completed Yoshi's Island 2 and 3, making sure to pick up Yoshi and Firepower. Next, I performed a glitch called Power Up Incrementation three times. Power Up Incrementation is a glitch that takes advantage of Yoshi block duplication and some poorly written spinning brown platform code to increment Mario's power-up state. Normally Mario's power-up state takes on a value between 0 and 3, where 0 is small, 1 is big, 2 is cape, and 3 is fire. By incrementing 3 times from fire Mario, we arrive at power-up state 6, which is normally unobtainable and has some odd behavior. Whenever you collect a power-up, the game looks up a memory address containing some code to run based on your current power-up state. When you have an invalid power-up state like this, it can start running code from places other than the game cartridge. By doing some specific memory manipulation tricks and having some extra controllers with taped down buttons hooked up through multi-tap ports, we can get the Super Nintendo to start executing instructions from the sprite x-coordinate table. By spitting out red shells at specific x-coordinates, we can write a series of processor instructions into this table and then execute them by collecting a 1-up. In this case, the processor instructions told the game to set Mario's power-up state to 22. Power-up state 22 behaves a lot like power-up state 6, except we can trigger this arbitrary code execution glitch using a mushroom rather than a 1-up, which was a lot more convenient because I could repeatedly use the mushroom from my item box to execute the instructions. Next, I restarted the level and spat out shells at X coordinates corresponding to processor instructions that would add about 3 hours onto the level's timer. And by collecting the mushroom from my item box, I executed those instructions. Without exiting the level, I did some sprite slot manipulation techniques to help with the next stage of the code injection, which is called the bootloader. I spat out more red shells to set up more processor instructions. This time, the processor instructions were coded to write the x-coordinate of the p-switch to an address specified by the x-coordinate of Yoshi. In this way, by moving Yoshi and the p-switch around and collecting the mushroom from my item box, I was able to write byte after byte of arbitrary data into some contiguous memory locations. The memory locations being written to were located just after some code that's run from RAM during each frame of gameplay. By doing this, I was able to add my own code to the game's code to be run every frame. The first six bytes of code I appended created a so-called coin display, where Mario's x-coordinate was copied into the game's coin counter. Up until this point, any pixel-perfect maneuvering had to be done by judging Mario's location relative to the level on a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis. With the coin display, I could then do pixel-perfect maneuvering just by comparing the coin count to predetermined values in my notes, which made things a lot faster and less error-prone. The next 26 bytes written to this portion of memory completed the bootloader. With the bootloader complete, whenever I performed a spin jump, Mario's x-coordinate would be copied into a position in memory indicated by a pointer, and that pointer would increment. That pointer's offset from the beginning of the Flappy Bird payload location was displayed as Mario's score, ignoring the 1's digit. By sequentially moving to an X coordinate and spin jumping, I could write byte after byte very quickly into an unused portion of system memory. The first three bytes written this way overwrote some of the game's palette data, which messed up the colors, but it also let me verify that the bootloader was working correctly. At this point, I iteratively wrote 331 bytes of processor instructions into unused RAM. Move to location, spin jump, move to location, spin jump 331 times. This payload was written by P4 plus 2, and it was the source code for Flappy Bird. Finally, I performed the last spin jump 
which wrote the last byte and made the game stop running Super Mario World's code and start running the injected Flappy Bird code. P4 Plus 2 went to a lot of trouble to make the Flappy Bird payload as compact as possible, both to minimize the amount of time it would require for me to inject it, and also to minimize the chance of error during the injection process. Fortunately, he was able to make use of some of the existing Super Mario World code and graphics to save some space. Even still, it took about an hour to complete the whole code injection. In the end, I'm really proud of this project and grateful to P4 Plus 2 and Mr. Cheese for all the help they provided. There's no way I could have completed it without them. You may have seen Taskbot perform similar exploits at a Game Sound Quick speedrun marathon. Taskbot is a computer board that sends pre-recorded handcrafted inputs to the game's controller port. Master June has written several code injection exploits intended to be run by Taskbot for this purpose. However, to my knowledge, this is the very first time anyone has ever completed this kind of large-scale code injection by hand on a video game console. If you want to see the notes that I used during the run, there's a link to that document in the video description. I did the whole thing in a live broadcast, so if you want to see the entire run, there's a link to the Twitch archive in the video description as well. That's about it. Thanks for watching.